Peggy 18. Hello everyone, I'm Colin Graham. I'm the animation director on Watch Dogs, and today I'm excited to present to you a vertical slice of the Watch Dogs free roaming experience. So actually, this is not a mission. Everything we're gonna showcase today is completely systemic, and we're free to do as we please. We start off in the wards, the low-income district of our interpretation of Chicago. When creating the world of watchdogs, we wanted to stay true to the city and give a unique flavor to each and every neighborhood, not only in terms of the architecture, but also in terms of the people that you'll encounter and what is happening in their day-to-day -day lives. In the wards, you'll see working-class citizens, rusty cars, gang members, abandoned houses, and low-grade pawn shops. It's really not the kind of place that you're gonna wanna be alone after dark. Nowadays, modern cities are increasingly managed by software, controlling traffic lights, electricity grids, and surveillance systems. In our version of Chicago, this management software is called CTOS, or the Central Operating System. The CTOS controls everything in the city, and it was created by the Bloom Corporation. Since the CTOS has been installed in Chicago, people get to work faster, the crime rate is dropped, and the communication networks are now more accessible and stable than they ever were before. It goes without saying that if everything is connected, somebody able to take over the system would be extremely powerful. At this point in the game, we don't have control over this district CTOS system. The icons that you see over people's head mean that we cannot hack into their mobile devices at the moment. We need to find the CTOS control center, install a backdoor virus into the system to take control over all of the infrastructure in this district. There it is, the CTOS control center. It's heavily guarded. Let's see if we can find the server access codes from a distance. With cameras, we can explore restricted areas without being spotted, tag different guards, and access details on their lives. It seems that Bloom employees all have a sort of shady past. There it is, the access code to the server room. Unfortunately, we can't access the server via the cameras. We need to sneak inside. One thing that was really important to us when we designed Watch Dogs was to fully support different player styles. Every situation in the game can be tackled the way the player sees fit. In this situation, we can go all out guns blazing, completely stealth without the guards ever seeing us, or we can hack from a distance without ever setting foot inside the restricted area. Let's hack this forklift. Aiden can use the environment to distract and lure guards. Pretty much anything you hack has multiple functions. So for example, you could use this forklift to access the roof, or you could use it to create cover. Hacking in Watch Dogs is all about player expression. Let's set an improvised explosive device so we can hack it a little bit later. You'll also notice Aiden's low profile stance. This indicates when the guards are unaware of our presence. We'll try to reach the upper level of the building to see if we can gain a vantage point over our opponents. Everything in the environment can be hacked, so we're gonna make some dynamic cover. We'll use this forklift to lure the guard towards our IED that we set earlier. Let's see how this plan unfolds. What you just saw is called focus. It represents Aiden's analysis capabilities and his quick reflexes. This gives the player more time to combine core game mechanics together, such as shooting, hacking, and driving, in order to handle more complicated situations. Now we can access that control room. Now we'll be able to hack all of the devices connected to the CTOS within the districts. Thousands of cameras, traffic lights, the electricity grid, and most importantly, 
all of the citizen information profiles. We can also benefit from the Chicago Police Department Crime Prediction System, which uses facial and pattern recognition to spot potential criminals or potential victims. Since this is a pretty rough neighborhood, I'm pretty sure we're gonna stumble on some suspected criminal activity pretty soon. And there it is. The system just pushed an alert of a potential crime. We can see the system trying to triangulate the location on our minimap. Take note, this isn't a mission. This can happen anywhere at any time. We've just spotted a potential victim. It's always up to the player if he wants to investigate or not, to take action or not. So let's see how this turns out. You think you're leaving me, huh? Jesus, I told you to stay away from you me! You belong to me now, get it? You better leave or I'll call the cops! I'll fucking kill you, goddammit! Yo, that was close. Good thing that we intervened. We managed to prevent the crime, but we triggered a chase. From here, the criminal's behavior is unpredictable. He can try to get away, shoot back at us, surrender, or call for backup. It seems like he decided to get away by car. Let's chase him down. In Watch Dogs, we have a wide variety of vehicles. Each one of them has their own unique properties and handling. Let's see how we can use the CTOS to our advantage to neutralize this criminal and leave the cops to deal with him later. The chase stops right here. Using the blockers usually reserved for the cops during interventions, we managed to stop this criminal without killing him. This gives us a reputation bonus. This system is at the core of the Watch Dogs experience. Depending on how we handle different situations in the game, the media and the citizens will have a different perception of our hero, whether he is a true vigilante or a reckless criminal. This will have repercussions throughout the game. Now, let's head for the Loop, the historical district of Chicago, where you're gonna find the most iconic buildings in the city. We're gonna go to a gun shop to see what arsenal is available for players. The economy is a big part of Watch Dogs. Players will be able to grow their arsenal with weapons and craft their tools in order to increase their power and their hacking abilities. You will find all of the weapons that you would expect in a traditional shooter. Pistols, assault rifles, guns, sniper rifles, and grenade launchers, Looks just to name a few. A lot of bullets were fired in our last encounter with the CTOS guards. Let's stock up on some more ammo. Finding everything. As we mentioned earlier, the media keep track of your actions and the citizens are gonna react according to the perception that they have of you. Here, the media is reporting a crime in which you are the number one suspect. The gun shop owner recognized you and decided to trigger a silent alarm to notify the police. Copy that, possible one suspect presumed armed and dangerous. Police are now trying to locate the source of the threat using the surveillance system in the city, represented by the yellow circles on the mini map. Aiden is able to stall their efforts by hacking into their communication systems while avoiding the scanning areas. Once they've lost our trail, we can go back to our activities. One thing that Bloom did to win over the population of Chicago with the CTOS project was to install free Wi-Fi hotspots throughout the city. Free Wi-Fi is cool, but not very safe with someone like Aiden Pierce around. 
Hacking into this box is going to give us access to every device that's connected to it. So let's see where that brings us. We just hacked into the webcam of a laptop. It seems that we're in the apartment of a mother and we can hear her baby crying in the background. Her bank information is in her mobile phone sitting right there on the table in front of us. It's totally up to the player whether we decide to steal it or not. Of course, this won't affect our reputation because nobody can witness this action. Just like in real life, nothing is totally black or white, but rather many shades of gray. This is exactly the situation where we want the player to question his own morality. Let's go withdraw that money. If you think that you're alone, think again. Aiden is not the only hacker in town. Someone's trying to install a backdoor virus on Aiden's phone in order to steal a portion of the information that he's gathered through the game so far. First, we're gonna have to reach the area where the signal is coming from. Using our profiler, we're going to try to identify the hacker before the installation finishes. There he is. In Watch Dogs, things aren't always what they seem to be. This is actually another player that seamlessly came into our single player experience. Let's not let him get away with this. We're gonna teach this guy a lesson. We stopped the hack, but the hacker managed to get away. I don't know about you, but we can't let this pass by. We need to retaliate. Using the grid, let's see if we can find that second player. There he is. Let's enter his game seamlessly. The second player is not yet aware of our presence. If we act carefully, he might think that we're one of the many NPCs in the city. So let's find a place to hide and start hacking. What's going on? The second player has just been alerted that a breach has occurred on his phone. He's trying to find us using his profiler. dangerously close. Let's hide in the car. We're spotted. Let's get out of there. Let's set up an ambush right here. By dragging the other player back here into the alley, we make sure that no civilians get hurt during the firefight. We didn't succeed in hacking the second player, but we did get a little bit of revenge. So that's what we have time for today. We hope you enjoyed our quick gameplay session. Stay tuned for more about Watch Dogs.